but besides, uh, Dr. Fuentes spoke about 50 to 70. In some studies, you even find 80%. Uh, just to underline, again, but I think it's the most important message that we have to give to uh, the families. Uh, having a person with autism is, there is no cure at the moment for autism if we think at the old restitutio ad integrum uh, approach of medicine. Treatments are aimed for reducing specific target symptoms. And so they could be helpful, but they must be displayed along and before, I'm sorry, and after the educational treatment. So, why and when, how, Dr. Fuentes already said, should I decide to use a medication for uh, the person with autism? And is it possible, if they have already started to use it, to reduce the medication in this population? Well, uh, I just show you this WPA World Psychiatric Association guidelines being published uh, at the end of uh, last year, just putting in evidence the importance first of any way, consider medication, just as I said, only after all known medication management options. Second, if you do introduce medication, you must go through all the monitoring of effectiveness, but also the side effects of this medication. And third, withdrawing medication is always possible and is recommended, is recommended to try to stabilize the minimum number of medication prescribed at the lower possible dosage. And of course, if you can even withdraw them very slowly, one drug after one drug, not more than one for time, and with very uh, small dosage reductions. Okay, so this is what we are trying to do at the Foundation. A few words about the Foundation. Foundation is a, is a, um, a recognized organization of public utility. Uh, in Luxembourg, and uh, it's, it's grown up as a parents' initiative, and uh, at the moment is part, of course, of Autism Europe. As you can see, it uh, started in 2001, uh, now 2010, but you've, you find the data until 2009, has grown up very much, and uh, developing many services, free residential homes for adults, uh, some recovery beds, a uh, daily center, a diagnostic center, and also training center, and some uh, services for uh, leisure and uh, uh, also vacancies. And uh, as you can see, more than 100 families in Luxembourg are uh, taking are taken into care by the foundation. I must say that Dr. Fuentes knows the foundation very well and uh, has done a very marvelous work at the beginning of the, of the foundation when. Uh, they um, did a, a marvelous work of reintegration into community of people living in the hospital and uh, being uh, uh, reintroduced into community uh, by also changing, uh, well, giving them a diagnosis and then changing their treatment. This is the foundation, just a few pictures. Uh, our intervention at the moment is focusing on the residential homes uh, free homes for six to seven residents is open all year with a high ratio, you can see, of uh, educators to people in the house and also the possibility of two short stay beds. This is the foundation. This is the place where the foundation and the community uh, where the foundation is. You can see. And uh, here come. This is. Uh, one of the challenges that the foundation tried in these 10 years of work raised, and the first one was to build these highly these structures in Luxembourg for highly dependent autistic adults, then to to reintegrate people from uh, psychiatric clinic and family, and then now to withdraw the neuroleptic and ansiolytics when it's possible. And this has gone through a training of a staff and uh, an intervention. Uh, inspired to the TEACH program. What is the FALPA? The FALPA is a, is a, psycho, is a Foundation Autism Luxembourg psychopharmacological approach to autism. It's only really um, like a database. It's a database that is used by all they keep working in the Foundation 
putting together many observations and many tests um, being discussed all together and then translated into uh, an intervention in reduction proposal of medications and of course educational approach. As you can see, but I'll be quite quick, I'll try to be very quick. Uh, this has started in 2008, it's involving 20 adults, average age is 36.8 and divided in 12 uh, men and eight women, and uh, with very high degree of dependence uh, living in the residential homes. And uh, for what regards assessment, we used uh, many instruments, from psychiatric diagnostic instruments, well, inspired to the, of course, the DSM, and also to the Royal College DCLD, but also we use some screening lash, like the DASH-2 of Matson, And uh, uh, we used them at certain times. Of course, we have started in 2008, so I won't be able today to show you the statistical analysis. I'll just give you a preview of first indications of how we did work and how we are going to proceed in our work. Uh, if you look uh, at the file, at this slide, there's also some reference to many other tests, but I want to outline the medical uh, check, which is conducted uh, very strictly on these people taking medication. Also, the behavioral assessment with uh, um, some kind of ABC conducted monthly, and also uh, very important, the evaluation of side effects conducted through uh, and a checklist inspired to Matson evaluation of side effects and the aims that Dr. Fuentes showed also in pharmatism. And the uh, uh, last instrument to be introduced, but I believe this is the Copernical um, revolution, is the quality of life instrument package by Brown. Well, there are many instruments about quality of life. We like even Brown, but a Shallock, whatever. And uh, I think this is a new approach uh, to medicine that we need to introduce, especially in developmental disability. Uh, so all this uh, is anyway tr uh, translated into a proposal reduction of medication, an uh, individual program uh, we teach, and of course starting reduction from old neuroleptics than benzodiazepines, depo, atypical, well, second generation antipsychotics. Then mood stabilizers, if there were, but in this case, we, we, I won't speak about antipileptics because uh, the person before me has already done. And uh, of course, we always have an informed treatment consent, special for adults who cannot express their consent. This is, of course, the most important part of the work, which is the TEACH program. And just a few slides to show you, the, the as, I told, as I told you, don't think these are statistical analysis. This is just a preview. You can see here that the number of people taking no medication has increased. But in this moment in which we are changing medication, perhaps you'll find people taking more medications together. So more than two medications. Uh, because, of course, we are passing from old neuroleptics to new antipsychotics from old uh, antidepressants to new. Also, if you look at the average number of medication per person, you see that anyway, especially from 2008, we are going slightly in reduction, even if in this transitory part of the work. And uh, if you look at the distribution of medications in percentages, at the foundation you see that anyway, neuroleptics have been decreased quite a lot, ansiolytics really uh, nearly, uh, we, we believe that next year we won't have any ansiolytics prescribed and used in the, in the foundation. And there is a slight increase of antidepressants, and uh, I'll say why, and of anticonvulsivants, but this is due to better diagnosis from an epileptic point of view. If you look at the number of antipsychotics and antidepressants of the foundation, to be honest, you see that anyway the tricyclics, the old antidepressants, have decreased while we have increased the prescription of uh, SSRI. While if you look at the neuroleptics, you'll find that they have been quite heavily decreased while they are typical have been slightly increased. Look at the milligrams per person of ansiolytics. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a real <laughs> medical slide, this because it puts together all milligrams of different medication, but gives you an idea. You can see that anyway, there is a, 
stronger reduction. The same for antipsychotics, and you can see the difference of blue neuroleptics uh, going to a strong decrease, decrease, while the atypical antipsychotics slightly increased. The same for the SSRI and tricyclics. You see the tricyclics are reducing, the SSRI increasing. The most important part of all this work is that anyway, the work we teach, the educational work by the, the people from the foundation, the educators, uh, the staff from the foundation, has been very good because besides the reduction of medication, we had not an increase of behavioral problems, but I can say this is for 2009, 2008. 10 is not finished, but a real reduction of behavior problems. So, results. We have reduced the neuroleptic and anxiolytic drugs. Um, with this reduction has not necessarily imply a problem behavioral uh, increase. Uh, reduction of number of medication per person. Reduction of neuroleptics in those ages and substitution with atypical ones. Increase of those with no medication or with polypharmacy. No increase of behavioral problems, as I said. Reduction of tricyclics and is substitution with SSRI. Uh, anyway, given sense to medication. Looking for diagnosis of comorbidity when it's necessary. And anyway, uh, treat the target symptoms. So, the last one. Our, as I told you, I, I believe what will change anyway, the intervention in this field, is to focus on the quality of life. And so, like Jason, perhaps the way to find the golden fleece will pass through finding a personalized interventions based on the being, on the becoming, and the belonging of the person. Thank you very much.